Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are LA. Baseball here at the Big A. It is the last home game of the season as the Angels go for the series victory over the division winning Oakland Athletics. Hi, everybody from inside the Big A and alongside Mark Gubas. I'm Victor Rojas. So glad you could join us once again for Angels baseball here on Fox Sports West. And this afternoon, on the heels of the complete game shutout that Jason Vargas threw last night, the ace is on the hill, Jared Weaver, and he's got terrific numbers against Oakland. Yeah, perfect guy to be able to finish off the home part of the schedule for the Angels victory. He's throwing the ball so well, especially in his last 10 starts against Oakland. The reason why he's able to throw his fastball wherever he wants to throw, but the big thing also, his curveball's been outstanding, his changeup against Oakland. We've talked about that a number of times this season. When you can throw off speed against Oakland, especially if you get ahead with the fastball, you can be very effective. Last 10 starts, like I mentioned, unbelievable numbers. He is 7-1 against Oakland with an ERA 0.84. When you really break it down, last five starts, 4-0 with an ERA .24, so he's been able to throw his fastball for strikes, get ahead of the count, and finish him off with his outstanding plus curveball and unbelievable changeup getting him out in front with swings like that, strikeouts, and weak pop-ups in the infield. Look for Weed to have one of those magical games today. As we saw last night, the off-speed pitch, very prevalent, very effective, too, for Jason Vargas. Hopefully that's the case for Jared Weaver today. He'll be opposed by Dan Straley, the right-hander, getting the start for the Athletics. We're just about ready for baseball here at the Big A, so sit back and relax. We're bringing the lineups and the first pitch when we return.
Ah, Dreamweaver is on the mound oh, this afternoon. Perfect timing. You like that? Yes. A's and the Angels, the finale of this three-game set, the last home game of the year for the Angels. And uh, pretty good matchup in that uh, Jared Weaver gets the last start. John Hirschbeck is behind the plate. We can only hope that uh, we see a repeat performance of Bob Davidson's strike zone last night because he was... It's a legit strike it's zone. It's a legitimate strike zone. He was calling strikes from both sides. Matter of fact, A.J. Griffin made... You know, just a couple of mistakes and really one mistake and the flare that Hamilton hit was just a flare that perhaps Chris Young should have caught. So Griffin actually pitched well as well, but uh, Jason Vargas got the complete game shut out as the A's never got the second base. We'll see what Weaver can do here this afternoon in the rubber game of the series. Let's check out Bob Melvin starting nine for the Oakland A's. For the 94 and 64 record, they have Coco Chris leading things off in center. It's Eric Sogard at second. Ted Lowry, the switch hitters at short. South Brandon Moss will serve as a cleanup hitter and play left field this afternoon. Joanna Cespedes is the DH. Josh Reddick and right Alberto Cayasco at third. Derek Barton at first base, and it's Steven Vogt batting ninth and doing the catches. Facing Jared Weaver. Weaver making his last start. I don't want to say last appearance because you never know what happens over the weekend in Texas, but uh, he's looking for his 11th win. Well, the big thing you look for for Weaver today is his comfort zone on the mound. We've talked about it in the opening, his numbers against Oakland, especially his last 10 starts, but the reality is how he's going to feel with a fastball command. If he's hitting his spots, gets ahead of the count. Vargas did it last night. Use that changeup and curveball to get a lot of swing and misses and easy outs against Oakland. So important for Weaver to feel comfortable with his fastball and throw for strikes. Let's check out the defense behind Weaver today. You've got Jamie Shuck at left. Colin Calgill in center. So no Mike Trout in the lineup today. Cole Calhoun is in right. The infield consists of Andrew Romine, Eric Guybar, Grant Green, and Mark Trumbull from third to first. No Howie Kendrick as well in the lineup. And Chris Ainetta behind the plate. With no Howie in the lineup. Grant Green at second base. Two hours at second since joining the Angels. Four overall this season. But he has turned 17 double plays. Getting better and better on the back end. Very good to the glove side, but the backhand is a work in progress. He's doing a much better job working with Alfredo Griffin. How he back-to-back games with home runs. With the Angels on the board in the first inning yesterday with a home run. As Coco Crisp is ready to lead things off. 257 average, 22 home runs, 65 runs batted in. Over four game last night as Oakland managed four hits. The Angels managed five. It's up and away, and it's one ball, no strikes. Pull to the right side. Grant Green is there. That was the first out of the game. And Coco going after that fastball early in the county does not want to have to deal with the curveball or changeup for Weaver. It's the 146 career hitter against Weaver. That's over 48 at bats. So it's one out, nobody on, and that'll bring up Eric Sogar, second baseman. 267 average this year for Sogar. A couple of home runs, 35 runs batted in. Did not play last night, but was the starting shortstop two nights ago, and ended up going one for four with an RBI. No balls and two strikes on Sogard. We were looking for his second consecutive win. Won the last time out. That was at Houston. Then got pushed back. Had to start skipped. There's some tightness in his right forearm. And it's inside, and it's one and two. But in Houston, allowed two runs on six hits. Six innings of work. 108 pitches for him. Try to sneak that no-seam fastball inside. A lot of times after he does that, we'll throw his change up away. This one's popped up. Green, a little bit of a late start. Racing out there, and he'll make the running catch. Two down. So as Jed Lowry comes to the play, we'll take a look at our Hyundai key to the game. A little pit bull today. Give me everything. Everybody in the lineup today, especially your last home game of the season. you got Weaver on the mound. A lot of energy in the field, especially in that outfield. Guys going to get that uniform dirty. Whatever it takes to be able to pull off this last win for the fans here, over $3 million again this season at the Big A. Jet Lowry takes upstairs. 
The shortstop hitting 290. 15 home runs, 74 runs batted in. Had a multi hit game last night, going two for three with a couple of singles. He skies this one out the left. JB dealing with the sunshine here. Catching and, at that angle to make yep. the play with the sun. Weaver with a 1 2 3 inning. We'll head to the bottom of the first. Chuck Ibar and Calhoun to face Dan Straley with no score. Weaver's coming off a one, two, three, top of the first. J.B. Sheck will lead things off in left field. Eric Ibar, the shortstop. Cole Calhoun in right. Josh Hamilton, the D.H. Mark Trumbo at first. Grant Green at second. Chris Iadette is doing the catching with Andrew Rollmine at third. And Colin Calgill batting ninth. Playing center field. Taking on Dan Straley. Ten and seven record of 4.08 ERA. Yeah, he's been throwing the ball well. His last five starts 4-0 with a very good ERA. Just over two. Fastball 88-93. Slider, curveball, changeup. No one count on J.B. Shunk getting 291 as a couple of home runs. 39 runs batted in. There's someone that thinks he should be the American League Rookie of the Year. Certainly should be under consideration for oh. what he's done with the bat, with the glove, strong throwing arm. No doubt about he's it. He's made some unbelievable highlight plays this season. Deserving candidate Jose Iglesias will get uh, a lot of votes as well Chris Archer Maybe even will Myers although Myers hasn't done it for the entire season I'm Trying to think of uh, who else would be in that uh, that grouping. I think JB's biggest challenger will be Iglesias yeah. Brandon boss dealing with the sunshine himself and there's the first down Check out the defense for the Oakland A's. Moss, Crisp, and Reddick in the outfield from left to right. The infield consists of Kayasco, Lowry, Sogard, and Barton, and both behind the plate. And Barton over at first base, I think, has really solidified this defense for Oakland. We saw it last night with his range and his ability to be able to stretch and be able to pick up some low throws. No errors in his last 80 games. Involved in turning 24 double plays, so he has a strong arm and very good range. Ibar drops a bunt on the third base side, but it trickles foul. It's an 0-1 count. Eric had the night off last night, hitting 265 now. Six home runs at 53 runs batted in. Oh, one check swing roller. That's a fair ball. John Hirschbeck says it is, but uh, first base umpire, though, James Hoy saying it's not. Oh, two count. Right away, the call was made. Hit the bat twice. 
good decision by Eric Ibar stopping. I'm surprised he went anyhow. Yeah. Maybe he thought initially they might end up being in a spot where you get a base hit. Speaking of which, a base hit anyhow. There it is. Veteran move. Yeah, I think if it had trickled past the mound, he would have kept on running. <laughs> exactly. The minute it checked up and Straley was going to make a play. We, we said all along his baseball instincts are off the charts. Realizing Straley's going to make the play, stops. Ends up getting a base hit now, a stolen base threat. 11 stolen bases on the season for Ibar. Cole hitting 277. Eight home runs and 31 runs batted in. Third game batting in this uh, number three spot. At one start there. Swings and misses on the first one. Cole last night 0 for 3, but as we pointed out, A.J. Griffin. In five innings, gave up three runs on five hits, six strikeouts, one walk for him. As he took the loss his last start of the year. Ivar started to go and then stopped. One ball, one strike. The question, I guess, for Oakland is, as you get into uh, later on this week, how you set up your rotation. Bartolo is supposed to pitch, I believe, tomorrow or Friday. Friday. They're off tomorrow. Off tomorrow up in Seattle. We're losing track of days already. High bar 11 stolen bases has been caught seven times this year. Australia does have one pickoff this season. Australia coming off a no decision against Minnesota. Three runs, three hits, and five and two thirds. Cole fouls it back, one and two. Last appearance for Straley against the Angels is right here at the Big A back on July 25th. Came up five runs, seven hits, and four and a third. It back to back starts for the Angels, or against the Angels, I should say. They're going to take losses, but the previous start to that wasn't bad. Two runs. The overall one and two in his career versus the Angels with a ERA just under seven. Off speed, bouncer to short. Lowry beats Sogard quickly to the first, and they do turn the double play, and the first is in the books. Scoreless as we head to the second here at the Big A.
Michaels Jr. Sports update. A lot of action. Mm. <laughs> a lot of action once again. A lot of extra inning games. All-time number of extra inning baseball games this season in the round. The show. Really? Did not know that. Moss, Cespedes, and Rennick for Oakland here the second. Team going for the clincher today with their ace on the hill. Yeah, I saw that last night watching some highlights. Another extra inning game around Major League Baseball. All-time high as far as extra inning baseball games. Two lot balls, of, one strike. A lot, of, a lot of free baseball. We've seen a lot of them. Yeah. What are we at, 19, 20? Lost track. Close. 8, 16. It's close. What was the last one? Well, we had back-to-back 11 inning games. One in Oakland and then the first game back. Seattle. That was Seattle. Seattle's played ni 19 now. Yeah. That's what it was. They had one up in Ken when Kansas City was up there just the other day. Yeah. Moss fouls it off to the left. Count remains two balls, two strikes. Brandon Moss getting to start in left field today. 258 average, 28 home runs, 81 runs batted in. Now it misses high. Full count. Cespedes on deck, serving as a DH today. There's the pal. And he walked him. Here comes Cespedes. Hey, folks, season seat deposits for the 2014 season now being accepted. Place your deposit now to receive priority seating for next year. More info and to place that deposit, just call 888-796-HELLO or log on at angels.com slash season seats. Sassman is hitting 241, has 26 home runs. And 80 runs batted it. Looks at a strike. Sassman is 0 for 1 in his career versus Weaver. This lineup for Oakland against Weaver coming into this game, 24 for 139. That's a 171 batting average. If you're the A's, you got to go Bartolo one. Would you go Griffin two? Or yeah. does it matter home and away? I think uh, they definitely would. I think if they have an opportunity, they'll put Sonny Gray at home. He's had great numbers at home. He's a youngster, comfortable in that environment. I think he may indeed be part of the rotation himself. But I, I think when you look at teams that really want to win home field advantage, I think this team right here with Bob Melvin, and he's expressing to me just the other day, they want home field advantage not only throughout the American League plus but the World Series has the American League at home four out of seven games it's important especially when you get the DH at home in the World Series home field advantage one during the all-star break for the American League so if you were setting up Bob Melvin's rotation what would you do I'm definitely having Bartolo Colon game one I think I'm going with A.J. Griffin game two. I, I like the way Dan Straley has thrown the baseball also. But Sonny Gray, he's, had, he's got a special arm. i got to find a way to get him in that rotation also. Any way you look at it, they're going to be pretty set. Now, Tommy Malone, I think, definitely will be down in the bullpen because he can get some lefties out. So those four guys, I'd have it set up at that point. Jared Parker, no? Or do you like Sonny Gray's stuff? A little bit no, more but, so than yeah, Parker. But, but Parker's change up so good also, especially when if they get locked up, which looks like they'll be against Detroit. Right. This one pulled into right field, a base hit for Josh Reddick. Moss will advance to second and stop there. And here we're, we're talking about you know, Chevrolet.
top records in all of baseball, both in Merrick Lake and Nash. The Red Sox lead the A's by one. Braves lead the Cardinals, who are winning today by half a game. Yeah, but get, yeah, Parker's got to be – maybe go Parker two and then Griffin three. Okay. And I, I still think what it comes down to, I think they may indeed put Sonny Gray instead of Straley. Although Straley's throwing well, especially of late form. Tough decision, but when you have those tough decisions, yeah. you feel pretty good about your rotation. Easy decision to make, I guess. Kayaspo looks at a strike. But I still believe their strength of their pitching staff is still their bullpen. So I think if you match up with the rotation, starting rotation in Detroit, I think the Tigers have an edge there, but I think Oakland has a significant edge in the bullpen. Yeah, Tigers have had a, a serious issue in the bullpen all season long. He's a part. Kayaspo takes a breaking ball for a strike, and it's 0 2. See, for me, if the Tigers are on the road, to open up, which right now if things started today, that's the case. They would open up in Oakland. You've got to go Scherzer one, Anibal Sanchez two, and then give Verlander the ball, game three, the first one at home. That definitely makes sense. But with Jim Leland, so he's such a player's manager, you want if he doesn't give the game ball opening day of the series to Verlander. See, Scherzer's going today for the Tigers. So he would be on the, the one extra day's rest. And Kayaspo goes down swinging on the breaking ball. First strikeout for Weaver, second out here in the second. But I think the Tigers have to think in terms of winning the game early for him. Good curveball here for Weaver to get the swing and miss. Kayaspo has had his tough times also against Weaver, as most of the batters here for Oakland has had against him. Just going back to that Leland conversation, Kent, at that point, don't you put your arm around the big man and say, hey, listen, you're still our guy, but Max has been the best guy all season long, and I want you here at home. So if we're down 2-0, I want you to be the guy here at home to get us back. Yeah, you could, he could probably sell that. And Anibal Sanchez has been just a, a notch below yeah. Scherzer, really, as well as he's thrown the baseball this year. And, Doug Fister has been fantastic himself. Porcella's throwing the ball well. So they're very deep there. They have to win the games early for the Tigers. They, they have to think in terms of the first five innings, get a significant lead, ride those starters as long as they can, because then it becomes a little bit sketchy when it goes down to the bullpen, I think, for Detroit. They can score, but also they're a team that doesn't manufacture runs all that well. One ball, two strikes on Derek Barton. Two outs, runners at first and second. No score here in the second. Barton at 274 average, getting a start again at first base. Over two last night with two strikeouts and a walk. One two pitch. Lays off. Two and two. Wait, and then you look at Boston. Who would have thought Yui Hara would be that good yep. closing games for him? When both their closures coming into the season are both out. For the season. Closing out games, I, I, I wasn't sure, but numbers wise, I mean, you look at his numbers over the last couple of years, his numbers have been pretty good. His splits have been very good. Doesn't give up many hits, throws a lot of strikes. Yeah. Bart takes that breaking pitch inside at full count. Yeah, that stretch of what, 38, 37, 38 straight batters retired. That's pretty good. That's That's unbelievable when you think about that. A lot of us pitchers on the mound were happy to get three guys out in an inning. <laughs> Runners are going to take off with the pitch here on full count with two outs. Barton Skies went out the left. JB broke back, now comes in. Good taking that side angle, makes the grab. And Oakland gets a couple of men on, leaves them stranded. We'll head to the bottom of the second with no score.
La Rosa or Shock. Hashtags are underneath each of those. Send us a tweet at Fox Sports West, and we will give you the final totals a little bit later on in the ball game. Cole Calhoun leading through the first two games of this series. As Hamilton swings and misses on the first pitch changeup to start the bottom of the second with no score. Hamilton, Trumbo, and Green. Josh at DH today. Swings through that fastball. 0 with 2. Josh last night, 1 for 4. Two RBIs singled in the third inning. 74 runs batted in for him. This one rolled foul. Moist Trailly just like A.J. Griffin, not wasting any time. Just like Jason Vargas last night when we were today. It's all about grabbing that baseball, staying on that pitching rubber, and attacking the strike zone, utilizing your defense. Hamilton goes down swinging. Vogt throws on the first to complete the strike out. There's the first down here in the second. Hey, fans, the Angels' wives have put together their annual player favorites baskets for an online auction to raise money for the Angels Foundation. The baskets contain autographed game-used items and items from players' hobbies other than baseball to bid on these baskets. Just log on at angels.com slash community. One out, nobody on for Mark Trumbo. 235 average for Mark. 34 home runs, 99 runs batted in as he pops this one up. Left side of the infield. Jeff Lowry with the call and the catch, two down. Well, he looked real comfortable in that pop-up. Yeah. Everyone else was turning their body to the side to be able to get a better view of the baseball. But Jed Lowry, comfortable, made the play look easy. Tell, just telling Eric Sogar, just, just watch the ball. Yeah, just look the ball into your glove. Yeah. Teasco is doing all kinds of dance moves. A little merengue, I think, over there at third base. Finally, Lowry called him off. <laughs> and he's telling Dino Evil, I, I didn't even see that ball. I'm glad he called for it. <laughs> The, um, it's quite a triumvirate that was Dino Ebel, Alberto Cayaspo, Eric Ibar. Yeah, that was that was always fun, especially on the plane flights. 2 0 count on Grant Green, the former Oakland Athletic. There's Dino. Three and Australia gave a base hit in the first inning to Eric Ibar, but then got Calhoun to roll into a double play. He's retired the first two here in the second. Grant looks at the strike. Green hitting 256, has a home run, and 17 runs batted in. Challenge him with a 3 1 fastball. Painted the outside corner. 3-2, gets him swinging. Two strikeouts at the inning. Halos go down in order. Two complete, no score.
be facing nine, one, and two on this business person special. Last game of the year here at home. Handlers have not fared well here in this ballpark this year. Moving into today's action with a 38 and 42 record here at the Big A. Stephen Vogt looks at a strike. Catcher hitting 254. Four home runs, 16 runs batted it. But uh, all that said, as far as the uh, the Angels' record here at home, as you pointed out moments ago, 11th straight season, 3 million fans. A lot of expectations again this year, and uh, just not bad. I mean, a 9 and 17 start to the season. Not going to get it done as Ibar knocks it down. Tried to catch it in the air, and it's going to go for an infield base hit. One of his odd plays. Hopefully he's all right with his thumb as he had to awkwardly try to slide and catch that ball. Jammed him. We conferred. Had a chance to do it over again. He would probably play it on the hop, especially with Vote running down the line. To that, heal the glove. That right hand. Yeah, it looked like he... Jammed his thumb. Still flexing it. Coco Crisp takes ball one. Grounded out to Grant Green to lead off the ball game. She's 0 for 1. Romine playing in near the cut of the grass at third. Hook foul. Now Chris dealing with Weaver's changeup. Curveball has been very effective from Weaver against Coco Crisp. Not fond of the off-speed stuff. Very quick on a fastball, though, both sides of the plate. Home runs he's hit this year, career high, 22. But another third base shot. Robot's going to have to hurry. Bare hands it. Throws to first to get him. Boy, what a nice play by Andrew. Good backup by Ionetta going to third base. Well done by Andrew Robot's made some very solid plays at third base. Going down the line. That's a perfect bunt for Chris thinking in terms of a base hit. A good throw from Romine. All important first out. Man in scoring position for Eric Sogard as he looks at a strike. Sogard popped down. Coco was credited with a sacrifice bunt there. Clearly thinking in terms of bunting for a base hit. But well played by Andrew Romine. Oh, a two. Tell you what, Mike sosha has got to be impressed with what Romine has done at third base. We all know what he can do at short and second, but that versatility he has now to be able to play a solid defensive third base. Important if you want to stay in the big leagues for a number of years as a guy, utility type player. The more infield positions you can play, the more apt the manager is going to keep you around. Oh, two pitch. Almost got him to chase. He did get him to chase. John Hirschbeck rings it up. Two down. Sogard having some words for Hirschbeck. Now Bob Melvin yelling out. At least get some help. Doesn't need help. If you see that as a home plate umpire, you don't need to ask for help. See if he indeed went. Looks like he crossed the plate, but close. I don't think I'm, he went, personally. I, I, I feel as soon as they take that bat off the shoulders, they went. Well, I mean, <laughs> spoken like a former big league pitcher. I know Weaver said he went. There's no question. And, uh, you know, Bob Melvin's trying to win out. He's looking for home field advantage. 
There's been no throttling down this weekend. Or this no. week here, I should say. Win the division. Oh, we'll just play some some of the backups, youngsters. Not here. Well, they feed off that energy up there in Oakland. There's no question about it. This this team that Bob Melvin manages, they love that energy they bring. So they feel it's important, very important for them to have home field advantage at the very least for the first round of the playoffs. One one pitch, an off speed pitch, cut on and missed by Lowry. One and two. Lowry had a fly ball to left field that ended the first innings. He's 0 for 1. Two strikeouts, one walk. And two hits allowed for Weaver. Base hit by Reddick and the infield base hit by Stephen Vogt, who stands in second. For 1 2. Missed in. Two balls, two strikes. Lowry average wise been a little bit better from the right side than he has from the left 310 from the right side 279 from the left side of the plate First season with Oakland Full count Tried two times going with that no seam fastball inside hasn't had a feel for that pitch yet Three full counts so far in this game for Weaver. Has an open base, doesn't have to give in. Has the option of throwing a curveball or changeup. Pell. This is ripped to right field, hit well. Cole playing a deep right field as always is there to make the grab shy of the track. And we'll head to the bottom of the third with no score. feed of more than 37 million people in America each year through pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters. Visit feedingamerica.org slash Fox Sports to learn how you can find hunger in your community. Together, we're Feeding America. Bottom of the third with no score. It's the bottom third of the order coming up for the Angels. Chris Iannetta, Andrew Roman, and Colin Calgill against Stan Straley. He went himself a 1-2-3 second, including a couple of strikeouts. And then it takes upstairs. 226 average for Chris. 11 home runs and 39 runs batted in. And Conger got the start behind the plate last night. So Chris with a quick turnaround gets a start today as he skies this one out to shallow right. Sogard cutting over. The second baseman is there to put it away for the first down. And Sogard got a quick jump on that ball. Another one of those players that. You know, you look at him, you think, okay, you could knock the bat out of his hand, but he gives you a good at bat. Play some solid defense, especially at second base. He's played some shortstop of late against the Angels, but I think he's more suited at the second base position. He's got good coverage on that 
at that position, especially going back on pop-ups. Did a glove side very good. A lot of energy also. Romine looks at the strike. The Sogards as well have also made Matt Garza's Christmas card list, so got that going for him. Sogard's done a lot of good things. He's had some great at-bats against the Angels, not only this year, but throughout his career. Again, an energy guy fights you in the batter's box and plays a solid defense. He can steal you a base. Got his little fan section out in Oakland also. Right to Eric Sogar. Two down. What is 29 pitches thrown so far by Australia in this game? At this point, is face the minimum. Two outs here in the third. Gave up a base hit to Eric Ibar, but then Cole Calhoun hit him with double play, 6 4 3. Think about Jason Vargas last night. Dude, two over the minimum last night. That's how good he was. He can just flat out pitch. Mike Sosha has the highest praises for him all the time when you talk to him and ask him about Jason Vargas. Just love the way he competes. Three complete games this season, two shutouts. As a manager, that means you can at times set up your bullpen to build a Hit some innings with certain pitchers on the mound, but when you have Vargas, you have Weaver, guys that go deep in the game like that, then all of a sudden you can rest some guys out of your bullpen. Calgill shoots one through the right side, a two out base hit for him. Spins the lineup back around at the top with JB Shuck coming up. Now things will be interesting coming up uh, beginning on Monday, you would think. To, to the evaluation process has been going on for a while now. At every level, facet of the organization. But uh, Jason Vargas is one of those questions that will need to be answered, a free agent at the end of the year. Well, he has indicated that he would love to come back and wear that Ames uniform again. JB pulls one into right field. There's a base hit. Calgill will easily round second and head to third. Shuck's going to try to go to second on a double, and he is gunned down. One guy you don't want to take that extra base hit against Josh Reddick. That power arm he has, an accurate arm yep. from Reddick. We played three, and we're still scoreless.
Just it's round here against Jared Weir, but a terrific throw once again. Boy, he's so accurate with his throwing arm. He put himself right in position to think in terms of right at second base. And able to apply the tag and get J.B. Shuck at second base. You already have one guy in scoring position in, in Calgill. You want to stay there at first base. You don't want to challenge that arm of Reddick too often. Eight outfield assists this season, 29 in his career. Strong but very, very accurate throwing arm. There's Brandon Moss, a left fielder, leading things off. Takes down and in. Moss let off the second with a walk, so no official at bat for him. Interesting thing about that play as you watch a replay, Jet Lowry was set up as a cutoff man to third base and then jogged to second. And was, Reddick threw the ball without looking. Yeah, and I was looking at Dino Weeble when a lot of times when the baseball's thrown into the cutoff man at second base, Dino is going to send the runner home. So he looked like he was more apt to send Calgill home. But instead, Reddick, a perfect throw, the second gets the third out. Colin Calgill takes charge, makes the catch. Moss retired for the first down here in the fourth. But Reddick turned his body at the perfect time to be able to make an accurate throw right on the base. Because if that, if that ball's not right on the base, there's no way it's going to yep. be now because Lowry wasn't really in position at that point to be standing at the base. Another base hit by J.B. Shock. Well, he thought initially right off the bat it had a chance to be the double getting by Reddick. But you don't necessarily care for the fact that he got thrown out at second because there was already man in scoring position at third. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the point where you want to stay at first base. Now, if there's no one on and you hit a ball like that, yes, all out effort to get in the scoring position. But you already have Calgill in scoring position. you got Eric Ibar coming up behind who's been very good with runners in scoring position. Off the end of the bat, Calgill broke back. Eric Ibar trying to take control and does so as Green just did get out of the way. Two down. Still best I've seen going back on a, on a pop-up in a long time in the majors, Eric Ibar. Fearless and gets in that position to make a play. Even though Green was that close to him, still able to catch and get the second out. So two outs, nobody on, and Reddick now at the plate. Singled through the right side of the second. Takes a slow break, the ball for a strike. One ball, one strike on Reddick. To 234 and his right-handed pitching breaks his bat loops went out the shallow right center field long run for everybody Calgill is there and a 1-2-3 inning for Weaver let's head to the bottom of the fourth with no score here at Angel Stadium
800 pick at and Rethink Possible. By CarMax, start the search for your next car at CarMax. CarMax, start here. And by Toyota's nationwide clearance event. Now you can save big on every Toyota car, truck, and SUV. Bottom of the fourth here at the Big A. Jared Weaver with a couple of strikeouts, one walk, and two hits allowed. See if the Angels get something on the board for him with Ibar, Calhoun, and Hamilton coming up facing Dan Straley. One ball, no strikes. Eric had a base at the left field in the first inning, so he's one for one. It's a very quick innings for Straley, just averaging 11 pitches per inning. And then here to the fourth. Two strikeouts, three hits allowed for Straley. This one's Luke Fallon out of play. Australia, 24 years of age, born in the Redlands. Makes his home in Springfield, Oregon. That's where he grew up, up in Springfield. Went to Western Oregon University and then transferred to Marshall University. We are. So let me say, we are Marshall. Right. 24th round pick in 2009. Ibar loops one out the left field. And that's falling in there for a second hit for Eric. Well, old teammate in Kansas City, Jeff Montgomery, went to Marshall. Yeah. Good old Monty. Yes. Boy, he put up some unbelievable numbers closing for us in Kansas City. A little subpar two ERAs for him. One of the best sliders. Yeah, the little closers there for a little while. Flash and Monty. Steve Farr also. Steve Farr. Yeah. That's right. It's all about the breaking ball with those three guys. Flash oh. Gordon had a great oh. curveball. Calhoun fouls it off the left. Oh, it won. Yeah, with Flash first got the big ones. And his fastball was pretty yes. firm, too. And yeah, he didn't trust the fastball. Even though it was 95, he just liked to throw his curveball. It was a Burt Blylevin ish curveball. His son, in the big leagues, D. Gordon, the Dodgers. Calhoun rolled into a double play in the first inning in Ibar. Back to first and to check in by Australia. The Angels have yet to have a man reach second base. That was the case last night for Oakland. That's how good Vargas was. Did not even get a man to second base. Well, we think about how well Oakland has swung the bat since August 23rd. The Angels and A's both with the best records at that point. And Oakland's scoring a lot of runs, but Vargas dominant. Had 13 hits two nights ago against Garrett Richards. Well, he just felt he was going to throw well. Right away, he was throwing his fastball in the outside corner last night, and that was setting up his changeup. But he pitched inside enough to open up the outside part of the plate. Hamilton on deck. Nobody out. Ibar with a leadoff single. Two hits today. A lot of afternoon games in the National League today. St. Louis won. Cincinnati lost a tough one. The Mets beat a 1 0 in Cincinnati. St. Louis has eliminated the Reds as far as a contender in the NL Central. Pittsburgh losing this game today against the Cubs. Two balls, two Derek strikes. Cole threw the ball very well yesterday yeah. for Pittsburgh. Orange Lutheran product. Tenth win. He may indeed be one of their top one, two guys as far as in their rotation if, while well, they're going to be in that one game playoff with Cincinnati. Trying to get home field advantage for that one. See, St. Louis continues to play great baseball. 
three teams in that division just a few years ago considered a weak division now one of the strongest divisions two balls two strikes with nobody out Australia slowing things down here Ibar takes off the pitch is in the dirt and it gets away from both not far enough for Ibar to take an extra at 90 feet Should be credited with a stolen base. 12 stolen base of the season for Ibar. Got a pretty good jump. Doesn't matter at that point if it gets away from the catcher. If you're moving, same thing with Calgill the other day when he's coming home on that attempted suicide squeeze. Once you're going home, even though the ball was thrown away, it would be normally a wild pitch, but when you're Trying to advance the base, you're going to get a stolen base in Calgill. Credit with a stolen base of home plate. 3 2 pitch. Cole pulls one to the right side. Sogard is there. One out, and Ibar ends up at third base. Good productive out by Calhoun. We'll get some high fives from his teammates in the dugout. Get Ibar in scoring position for Josh Hamilton. Infield in now for Oakland. Hamilton struck out swinging in the second inning. 0 for 1. Two strikeouts for Straley, both coming in that second. Hold one. Well, you think early in the game, infield in, odd, but when you're facing Jerry Weaver with those numbers he's had against Oakland, Bob Melvin has no choice but to bring the infield in here in this spot can't afford to give up a run that might be the run to end up losing the game with this one's pulled over to first Barton comes home I is safe as Barton throws it away Hamilton thought about going to second he'll stay right there and the Angels have a one nothing lead boy the contact play was on and Ibar got a great jump Hamilton will get credit with an RBI Quick jump. You have to have a perfect throw if you're Barton. Eric Ibar, nice job as far as going on contact, reading that. As soon as this ball is hit on the ground, going. And Barton with the throw to the first base side of the plate, unable to get it there and vote, unable to catch the baseball. Wasn't that bad of a throw. But try to be quick with the tag and be able to swing back. But Ibar. Beats it out, scores the first run of the game. Trumbo chops it down the line. Kayaspo goes into a slide at the back end, throws out Trumbo, two down. Hamilton ends up at second. Well, Kayaspo, very good on the back end. He's got a strong throwing arm. We've seen that a number of years while playing with the Angels. It's Trumbo out. Mark very aggressive. He's swung at the first pitch both at bats. 0 for 2 with a pop up, and now that ground out. He has to tap into the success he's had against Straley coming into the game 5 for 11. It's a 455 batting average. Grant Green looks at a strike. He punched out there in the second. 1 0 Angels here in the fourth. Hamilton getting credited with his 75th run batted in. Slow roller to third. Kayaspo's got it. Low throw. Barton takes it out of the dirt. The inning is over. But the Angels strike first. Single by Ibar. It's one nothing Angels.
Jared Weaver. Big curveball. Kayaspo swinging. Sogard. Hard slider. Check swing. John Hirschbeck rings him up. Two punch outs. In the game for Weaver. Four shut out in. One walk. So far for the Weave. Here in the fifth inning, it'll be the bottom third of the order. Kayaspo, Barton, and Vote. 54 pitches thrown by Weaver. Four innings, two strikeouts, one walk. A couple of broken bats, by the way, in that uh, fourth inning. Kayaspo's 0 for 1. He struck out in the second inning. Swings the first one, drives one out to right field and hit well. Cole Calhoun at the wall, leaps up, and he'll make the catch just in front of the safari park. One down. <laughs> you wanted to say that for a while, <laughs> haven't you? See Cole making like Corky Calhoun, leaping up and making a play at the wall. Good job as far as getting the feel. He's on the warning track, knowing exactly where the wall is. It's the play. One out. First pitch. Like he's jumping on a tree at the San Diego Zoo. We love the San Diego Zoo. <laughs> Derek Bart looks at a breaking ball for a strike. Still got some action going on in the AL Central also with the Tigers. Max Scherzer. Yep. Going on the hill. Cleveland with that big victory yesterday. Jason Giambi walk off. Yeah, the Tigers... Um, Holding on last night after giving it up a couple of nights ago. Yeah, a little stress down in the bullpen. What did your boy, boy, brother Mike think about that uh, down there about as far as the bullpen? How does he feel? How comfortable is he with the bullpen? He is merely one man, Gooby. Yes. Well, we're putting a lot of pressure on him down there now. Yeah. We should. You know what? We actually should. As Grant Green feels that one, throws over the first, two down, and the Tigers will be playing the Twins, we said, later on. And we just talked about Jim Leland and the coaching staff and the decisions they have to make going into uh, the postseason as far as that rotation and how they play it out. But, uh, yeah, I think there's more pressure now on Mike. Now that we've talked about him. Yes, there's we've no question. We've whammied him a yes, little bit. Yes, now the bullpen has to be settled. I'll keep wearing him out. <laughs> as well you should. <laughs> Two outs, nobody on. Here's Stephen Vogt. Boat had an infield base hit in the third inning. So he's one for one. Calhoun comes in and a shutdown inning for Jared Weaver. We will head to the bottom of the fifth inning with the Halos. Bring you to a one nothing lead. Presented by authority of the Los Angeles Angels. 
may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Any accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball LP. Ionetta Romani Calgill for the Angels here, the fifth inning facing Dan Straley. Chris hit a pop up. Second baseman Eric Sogard leading off the third. He's 0 for 1. Early on, Chris Sinet, a very patient work to walk 65 walks a season, but he's been more aggressive in swinging the bat with authority of late, jumping on that early count fastball. Two balls, two strikes. Which there's times to be patient. There's also times to be able to jump on a fastball, especially when you're known as a guy that's going to see pitches. So pitchers more apt to throw a first pitch fastball just to get ahead of the count. That's when you jump on it, and Ionette has been doing that of late. Another breaking ball in the dirt. And he walked him. Lead off man is on board. That's the first walk issued by Straley. Of Romine. Hey fans, make sure to check out the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado that comes with an available 5.3 liter engine and offers the best V8 fuel economy of any two-wheel drive pickup. Visit your local Chevy Silverado dealer today for all the latest offers and details. Romine grounded out his first time up. Shows Barton. It's a beauty down the third base line. Kayaspo bare hands, throws the first, and Barton can't handle it. The sacrifice advances Ionetta over to second. You figure that Roma will get credit for sacrifice, and there'll be an error charged. It's a tough play for a first baseman. That baseball is going right towards the runner. Good job as far as getting the bunt down by Andrew Romine. Kayaspo on the bare hand, but that throw is going right towards the runner going down the line. Difficult to be able to catch that baseball and apply a tag if you're Barton. Well, the Angels manufactured a run last inning. Kirk Ibar with a base hit in the left center field. Steals a base, once advances the third on a ground up by Calhoun and scores on a ground ball by Hamilton. Bunt has popped up and it falls between the mound and home plate. Calgill is retired. The sacrifice advances Ionetta to third and Romine to second. J.B. Shuck will bat with a couple of men in scoring position and one out. With no Trout, no Kendrick in the lineup here today. Mike Sosha more apt to play little ball and so far he's done that in this game. Forcing the infield in once again for Oakland. <laughs> JB had a single his last time up, a one for two game. Got a little bit greedy, trying to stretch that single into a double, and Reddick threw him out. That ended the third. Look at it, at the very least, get a, a long fly ball into the outfield to get the run across. Two balls, no strike with Ibar on deck. And Ibar has a couple of hits.
two and one. As far as outfield arms for Oakland, Moss a pretty good arm in left. Coco Crisp, that average arm in center, very good arm in right field with Reddick. We've seen it already in this game. So Dino Eel more apt to challenge Moss and Crisp. Outside, three and one. Three one pitch. Shot grounds one to short. Coming home as Ionetta easily thrown out. Moving to third base is Romine. JB swinging a pitch and perhaps out of the strike zone, especially in a 3 1 count. That's when you're looking in a certain zone, be able to at least be able to get a, a baseball in the air. Right at Lowry, no chance for Ionetta to score there, but Romine was able to get the third base, which is important because Straley has seven wild pitches. Good base running by Romine. So first and third, two outs, a one nothing Angels lead here in the fifth. And here's Ibar, twice is singled out to shallow left. This one's back up the middle. That'll bring in a run. A three hit game for Ibar. Two nothing Angels as Shuck ends up at third. Eric with his 54th run batted in. Only 279 batting average with runners in scoring position this season. Base hit for Eric Ibar. Right back up the middle. A comfortable, good swing from Ibar. Gets it by Australian into the outfield. Chuck able to go to third. That's what we've seen a lot from the Angels of late. Picking up your teammate. JB Shuck unable to get. Ionetta in, but Eric Ibar picks him up. One oh count on Cole Calhoun. 0 for 2 today. A double play ball in the first and a ground out in the fourth. One ball, one strike. Two balls and one strike. I had to let off the inning with a walk. Romine tried to sacrifice him and reached on the error. Cal get a sacrifice. Shock fielder's choice. And Ibar with an IBI single. Check in on Eric. Picked up a stolen base himself in the fourth. Ibar takes off and Calhoun fouls it back. He had a pitch and drive there. Two and two now. He's had a couple pitches to drive against Australia. He fouls straight back so far. Speed upstairs. Full count now.
Payoff pitch, and he walked him. So they're loaded up for Hamilton. Second walk of the inning for Straley. It's been uh, pretty economical, as you were talking about. A few pitches thrown, although he got extended there in the fourth inning. Before settling down and getting the back-to-back -back ground outs by Trumbo and Green, but the walks, two of them now here in the fifth. Kurt Young going out to talk to him again. He's going away from his fastball. He's throwing a lot more off-speed pitches and unable to locate his curveball, slider, even changeup. More than likely, you're going to see first pitch changeup here to Hamilton. 67 pitches thrown, 42 in the strike zone. Hamilton with a strike out, an RBI fielder's choice. Halo's up 2 nothing, looking for more with the bases loaded here in the fifth. This is off the end of the bat to the left side. It's going to be a tough play for Jed Lowry. Throws the first, that's an infield base hit. The run scores, but for whatever reason, now you've got Cole Calhoun stuck between second and third, and he gets tagged out. Where was Cole going? Not with somebody in front of you like that. The Angels strike for two. They lead it 3 nothing. An infield base hit and an RBI. The Angels with a 3 nothing lead. And Barton with a quick throw over to third. And Calhoun going. And Eric Ibar is already occupying third base. He didn't stay in the long, uh, long enough of a rundown for Ibar to try to be able to score before the tag was applied. But Josh Hamilton with two RBIs today. Hasn't got a ball out of the infield yet. He's got a fielder's choice and a base hit, but two RBIs. He'll take it. 76 on the season. Top of the order for Oakland here. Crisp. Sogard and Lowry. Two balls, no strikes. Coco Crisp is 0 for 1. Ground out in the first and had a sacrifice bunt in the third. That is ripped to right field beyond the reach of Grant Green. Leadoff single for Crisp. Third hit allowed by Weaver. We went with a fastball. Four seam fastball, but 
crisp, quick, tucks his hands in. It's a good part of the bat, gets it over Grant Green's head for a leadoff single. Eric Sogard 0 for 2 with a pop to second and a strikeout. Romine playing it over at third base. This one foul back. One ball, one strike. Base hit by Crisp, the uh, first man to reach. Since the leadoff single, infield single by Stephen Vogt, the third inning. It's a nine in a row retired by Weaver before that hit to Crisp. Looking to see if Chris would run, but he hasn't, hasn't had a big lead at all in this series. Two balls, one strike. So used to seeing Coco try to steal a base. He hasn't had real big leads at all. We've heard 67 pitches, 42 have been strikes. Two one pitch. This one's pulled into right field, a base hit, off-speed pitch. Coco round second, he'll easily get to third, and Oakland cooking here in the sixth inning. Get back-to-back hits, open up the frame. Talked about how pesky Sogard has been against the Angels. He's put the ball in play once again. He had a pretty good swing at a slow curveball earlier in that at bat against Weaver. Most of the Ace hitter's been out in front, but he was on that and fouled it straight back. All right, Denham, Weaver, high bar, talking things over. Jed Lowry, the batter, the shortstop is over two. Fly ball to shallow left in the first inning and a fly ball to the warning track at right field in the third. Three for nine in the series. Oh, it's a movement to it. Sink action on 87 mile an hour fastball from Weaver. Lowry drives one out to left. JB Shuck moving back on it, still going back at the wall, and he will make the catch as he falls down. Tagging and scoring his hook of Chris. Right. He went down quickly, like he stepped on something. Between the grass and the warning track, it looked like. That little crease. Fortunately enough, be able to hold on to the baseball. Yeah. When he got back, he kept looking where the wall was going to be, the warning track, and then he see him step. Wait a second. No, it wasn't quite all that. He looked at that grass in, in the dirt. He's trying to make one of those over-the-wall catches again and fall in his stands. This time falls at the wall. Did he step on his own foot? He smiled about it. 3-1. <laughs> Angels, here's Brandon Moss, and he skies one out to shallow left center. Ibar going out. Shuck coming in. Shuck with the call. Keeps his feet firmly apart. <laughs> Two down. I got to believe the fellows in the dugout might... Have some fun with JB when he gets back into the dugout. <laughs> but it goes down as it out. It does. Lowry picks up his 75th RBI. Here's Saspinus with a man at first and two down. He sold it well originally, like he stepped on the grass yeah. in the warning track area. Rick Smith, the assistant trainer, was coming up to the top step, ready to go check him out. It's all about the presentation. He sold it well. Cespedes takes upstairs. 
The Athletics DH 0 for 2. Fly ball to center and a pop up to short. Cespedes is a swing and a miss. Sogard broke and then stopped at first base. Two and one. Run scoring against Jared Weaver here in the sixth inning. Snaps the uh, 29 and two thirds scoreless inning streak for him. But if he can get out of this with just a run, take that back to back singles, first and third, and nobody out to start the inning. Well, he's been so good against Oakland. It's a long period of time. Good breaking ball there. Two and two. Interesting what he's done against Cespedes in his at bat. Three straight fastballs, then threw him a slider. Have you made him aware of a fastball? We talked about Vargas last night. He made Oakland aware of his fastball, but finished off with secondary pitches. Breaking pitch, lifted foul and out of play. Sogard was on the move. JB trying to get over there to see how far that ball was going to be foul. He's trying to cover all kinds of ground now. Yeah. Pretty sure that was about 18 rows deep foul. Sogard takes off, and this one's fouled back. Laid on a fastball after back to back breaking pitches. Now you would think you have him set up for a breaking ball. An option between the slider or curveball. Just keep that front shoulder in. Don't overthrow it. Off the end of the bat, foul and the seats on the first base side. So count remains at two and two. Oakland with a run on four hits. They've committed one error. They've left three on base. The Halos with three runs, six hits, four left on so far. Coming up at the bottom of the sixth inning, Trumbo, Green, and Ionetta. This will be the 79th pitch thrown by Weaver. It's a breaking ball fouled off the right. Fifty two strikes. Twenty seven out of the strike zone for Weaver. There goes Sogard again and Cespedes takes inside. A full count. Stolen base for Sogard. Tenth of the year. Three, two off the end of the bat. It's going to be a tough play for Eric Ibar. Has no play. Infield base hit for Cespedes. With Reddick coming up, runners at the corners. Mike Butcher's going to come out and pay a visit. Right away, Eric Ibar was thinking in terms of trying to get Sogard going around the base at third. Mike Gallego, the third base coach, was pointing to make him stay right on the base. Because Ibar had no play at first against Cespedes with his speed.
John Hirschbeck going to go out. And with first and third, pretty good speed. Cespedes with seven stolen bases. Always the defense talk about also. We were still good, though, with 81 pitches. And velocity has been consistent, although not over 90 at any point during the course of this game. Those are the frustrating hits, those ones off the end of the bat. On the infield? Yeah, or especially in when you make a perfect pitch. And off the end of the bat, well, when you look at how the, the Angels have scored some runs in this game, same yeah. thing. Both pitchers have thrown the ball very well. They're very frustrating when you think you make a perfect pitch and the guy's out in front and then the slow roller like that once it gets by you on the mound. Reddick swings the first pitch breaking ball and off the end of the bat. Off the top of the dugout, 0 and 1. There's a lot of times you're going to have odd swings when you have both pitchers with good curveballs and change-ups. They're going to be out in front, and if they make contact, you might see a flare here and there or a slow roller in the infield. Reddick out the left field. J.B. Shuck moving back on it, and he will make the catch. So Weaver limits the damage to just the run as we hit at the bottom of the sixth. The Angels lead is 3-1. Throughout, Jared Weaver, very good. Breaking ball, gets Kayaspo swinging. Slider in, check swing, so guard, strikeout. Eric Ibar's had a very good game. Three hits, as a matter of fact, this base hit up the middle. Driving in Andrew Romine. Part of a 3 1 lead for Weaver, who limited the damage last inning. Even though there wasn't anything hit necessarily hard, still a number of base runners that gets through with only one run allowed. Yeah, you hate the fact that uh, he threw a lot of pitches in that inning, but you'll take the fact that he allowed just one run. 83 pitches as we begin the bottom of the sixth inning. 3-1 Angels. Mike Trumbo to lead things off. Straley has thrown 68 pitches, and he's had a couple of longer innings, the fourth and the fifth. Trumbo's 0 for 2 with a pop-up and a ground out. One zero pitch, outside. Two balls, no strikes. A little more pacing this is bad for Trumbo against a guy who Trumbo sees the ball very well out of the hand of Dan Straley. Home run, his career with five RBI coming into the game. Two and one. Straley with a couple of strikeouts, two walks, six hits allowed. Eric Ibar, a three hit game, three singles. An RBI and a run scored. Two and two. Well, it seems like Mark's pulling off the baseball right now. He's so strong, he just has to have his normal swing, and the ball will jump off the bat and go a long way. He's just trying to generate bat speed and pulling that front hip open.
Payoff pitch. This one's fouled back to the screen. Grant Green on deck. Chris Ionette after him. Jumbo goes down swinging on the breaking ball one out Let's go back and revisit our Hyundai key to the game. It's like give me everything so far They've certainly manufactured the run so in this game the Angels done everything possible to be able to get this early lead against Oakland Haven't squared up many baseballs, but Eric Ibar has done his job with three hits and Weaver the same and defense solid behind Weaver Grant Green looks at a strike. Green struck out on the second inning and rolled over to Kayaspa, the fourth. One and one. A couple of finals in National League, St. Louis over Washington, Mets over Cincy, Cubs leading Pittsburgh as Green fouls this one back one and two. Everything else a little bit later on. Houston will be in Texas. Cleveland is at home hosting the White Sox. Well, they've had the White Sox number this season, Cleveland. They won, what, 12 in a row? Green fouls it off to the right. Boston will be in Colorado. Boston currently with the best overall record in the American League. Oakland a game back of that. And Detroit two back of Oakland. Broken bat roller towards short. Lowry has it. Green hustling down the line. That's an infield base hit. But Lowry took forever to get around that, didn't he? Still think it's this an issue for Oakland as far as their infield defense. Some errors being made. Not that's not going to get out as an error, but it's a play where Lowry's got to come in quicker, knowing that Grant Green runs well down the line. It's pretty steady at that position. But knowing the green runs well, you have to come in there a little bit quicker with more of a sense of urgency to be able to throw him out at first. Oakland this year has committed 95 errors compared to the 104 that the Angels have committed. So I had a bats with one out and one on. Chris takes ball one. Ball for one. He popped out. That was in the third inning. Walked leading off the fifth. Pretty quick throw to first base there. He does have one pickoff very quick for his footwork. Boy, Strelly, he's got to look up. He's given up seven hits. And JB Shuck's base hit in the right field in which Reddick threw him out at second. Probably the hardest hit baseball. Calgill the other way, very good swing on that one. Hit the ball hard between first and second. But other than that, not a lot of baseball squared up against him. It up on Ionetta. Halo's getting a run in the fourth, two in the fifth. Oakland getting their one run in the sixth inning. Halo's will fly to Texas after the game today. We get a four game series against the Rangers beginning tomorrow night. It's three night games and a day game on Sunday. Toward the seats, and it's one ball, two strikes. So 
some tough pitchers the Angels will be facing down there in Texas. You got Garza tomorrow night, Ogando on Friday, Derek Holland, who threw a shutout his last time out on Saturday, and then Sunday, you Darvish. But they certainly have been struggling. Called strike three. Ionetta goes down looking. Two outs. That would mean that if uh, Texas gets in that one game playoff they play, Garza would be on the mound. Hard slider. Just off the outside corner, but John Hirschbeck always been known as an umpire will call that borderline outside pitch. Australia gets the benefit of that call. Unless they get in and push Darvish back. Thanks for Martin Perez pitching. No, he's been throwing the ball well for him. A youngster. I wonder if they would go with cars in that one game playoff on the road. Gotta be cars. If it's not dark, especially if it's against Tampa, his old team. Be interesting to see that matchup. Robine in the hole here at 0 2. 0 for 1 today. Green still over at first base with two outs. Four strikeouts now for Straley. Fouled off the left. Speaking of that series down in Texas, the probable brought by Nissan, Rome Williams, CJ Wilson on Friday against Ogando, Garrett Richards. Very good pitching matchup that last game of the season. Vargas versus Darvish. Possibility, outside possibility that Vargas doesn't go if the game doesn't mean a whole lot. Romine strikes out swinging and Straley strikes out the side. We played six and the Angels up three to one. Combos for only $3.99 plus tax. Go big at a participating Jack in the Box today. And by Chase, send money to almost anyone, anywhere, with your smartphone. Chase, quick pay, so you can. Top of the seventh inning, the Halo's up by the score of 3 to 1. Dude, Weaver back to work as the Angels start to get some action going in their bullpen. 83 pitches. Thrown by Weaver. Conn and Bo Shears riding the lefty respectively. 
Kiaspo, Barton, and Vote. Alberto today is 0 for 2. Struck out back in the second inning, hit a fly ball to right in the fifth. Jared throwing 23 pitches in that sixth inning. Limiting the damage to just a run. Aspel pulls it over to first. Trumbo's got it. Waves off Weaver. One out. Let's take a look at our Captain Morgan. Game reset with the Angels up three to one. Jared Weaver six and a third. One earned run. Eric Ibar three for three. A stolen base, a run scored, and an RBI. Josh Hamilton's picked up a couple of runs batted in. It's the Angels. Final home game, 38 and 42. Finally moved to 39 and 42. Eighty-seven pitches now for Weaver. Fifty-eight strikes. Derek Barton 0 for 2, a fly ball to left and a ground ball to second. There's the 1 2. Boy, he jammed it nicely. Grant Green has it. Two down. Well, it's time to take a look at that Carl's Jr. sports update around the majors. Tigers go for that AL Central title. Max Scherzer on the hill against the Minnesota Twins. And who needs home field the most? Kind of touched on that throughout the scheme. We talked about Oakland. Both Oakland and Boston, very, very good home records in the American League. National League. St. Louis, they feed off that crowd, too. When you think about how well they've played over the years, that sea of red in St. Louis. Bob Melvin has stressed that he wants this club to win home field throughout the playoffs if they can. Both lofts went out to left center. J.B. shot comes in. He's been busy. Yes, he has. Seventh inning stretch time here at the Big A. And the Angels with a 3-1 lead. The last at home for us. Uh, Angels Junction will have the biggest impact next year and uh, squeaking it out. Cole Calhoun with 38% of the vote. Dane De La Rosa made a late charge. Made it close. Yeah. Very close throughout. All three. Big impact this year.
definitely look forward to seeing what they can do next season. The Angels have 9 1 and 2 coming up with a 3 1 lead. At the bottom of the seventh inning. De La Rosa getting warmed up. Very good in that eighth inning roll. And outstanding for Mike Sosha. Consistent velocity. 94-97. One ball, one strike on Colin Calgill, who's picked up a base hit today. Shot a single to right field in the third inning. Had a sacrifice, but of the fifth. Colin getting to start at center field today in place of Mike Trout. Brett Anderson getting warmed up in the bullpen for Oakland. Former starter now pitching out of the bullpen for the A's. Two two. Calgill lifts one down the right field line and tails foul. May have broken his bat. New lumber for Cal Gill. Australia 94 pitches now. Five strikeouts, two walks. They've covered bunches too. Two punch outs in the second, two walks in the fifth, three strikeouts in the sixth. Popped up. First base side, Derek Bart crossing into foul territory. One away. AMLB.com at bat celebrating its five year anniversary. It's the number one mobile app for live baseball. It's available across all platforms. Just text that bat to 31826 or log on at angels.com for more details. Here's JB Shuck. One for three. Base hit in the third inning. Ball of the strike. John Hirschbeck has been consistent behind the plate. As to be expected. Oakland with five hits. The Angels with seven. Both teams have stranded five. Shuck takes inside. Two balls and a strike. Fine, solid last start of the season for Jared Weaver. Seven very good innings, five hits, one earned run allowed. Three and one, and that got John Hirschbeck. Well, almost like it might have been a cross up. Bounce and gets him the chest area. Oh, wasn't able to get his body in front of that pitch. Three-one count now on Shock with one out, nobody on. 
Eric Ibar's done a nice game. He is on deck. Chuck pops it up. Sogar, the second baseman on the dirt. Two outs. Let's take a look at our AT&T U-verse rewind. Speaking of Eric Ibar having a big game, he's been solid throughout. Base hit in the left. And another base hit in the left center field. It was the exact same swing, and then this one right back up the middle, an RBI single, three for three, stolen base, a run scored, and an RBI for Eric Ibar. Bob Melvin has gone to the bullpen. That's it for Dan Straley. So Straley goes six and two-thirds, and he departs with the Angels on top, three to one. One hundred pitches and six and two thirds, seven hits, three runs, one earned, five strikeouts and two walks. Well, he certainly threw the ball well. Brett Third. Anderson coming in the game now. Sorry, good. We turn in and out. Who's in? Who's out? Could use a double double bounder now. Yes, sounds good. Animal style. One and four record for Anderson. High bar. Buying for his fourth hit. Pulls the first one foul. Brent Anderson, good fastball, 90 to 95 range, slider curve, changeup. It's a six three hit game this season for Ibar. Looking for his first four hit game of the season. Ibar goes down swinging on the breaking ball, and the inning is in the book. Seven complete here at the Big A, and the Angels holding a 3 1 lead.
Falco. Crazy you can taste. Top of the eighth inning with the Angels on top by the score of three to one. And Mike Sosha has gone to the bullpen and brought in Dane De La Rosa in place of Jared Weaver. 73rd game for Dane. Six and one mark and a 2.96 ERA. Has a couple of saves under his belt. They'll be facing the top of the order now for Oakland and Chris Sogard and Lowry. That velocity he's had, very good changeup. Saw a curveball and a slider. Coco today is one for two. Had a sacrifice bunt, third inning. Weaver, by the way, seven innings, five hits, two strikeouts, one walk, one run. It's a little bit high. It was a changeup. Count leave it up at one ball, one strike. Fouled off the left. Certainly a lot different look. Nice catch there by a fan. Dropped the glove, but a lot different look from Weaver. Yeah, Weaver With Dane De La Rosa coming yeah, into the game. Yeah, Weaver's fastball, 88-89 range. A lot of slow curves and change. De La Rosa throwing 96-97. See the late swing by Chris. Inside, two balls, two strikes. So far, we believe you throw a fastball to Chris. Just keep it away. Force him to hit it to left field. That's when he's batting from this side of the plate. Very quick on a fastball in the inner half. Fouled off the uh, facade of the dugout. Fortunately, didn't go into the uh, seats in that front row. And Albert Pujols. Shocker, Albert and Mike Trout hanging out together. Yeah, it's good to see, though. That's your Mike Trout just keep talking baseball as much as he can with Pujols. Another 2 2. Bouncer foul off the bottom. Be sure to stick around after the last staff. We will break things down with Angels Live post game presented by your SoCal Mazda dealers. Quick post game is the Angels Zoom. Final one here at the Big A for yeah, you today. You and Jose. Looking forward to it. And four more in Texas. Get his foot again. Is that a residual from the previous one? Yeah, he's playing off some pretty tough pitches. Yeah, you can see the way he's moving around. He still feels that one that hit his foot. Two two upstairs. Full count. Sogard is on deck. 3 2. This one's looped uh, down a third base line. Roll by. And the rail makes the catch, and there's the first down here to scrap this eighth inning. Very comfortable, relaxed approach over there to go get that pop up by Romine. Got to the wall, 
Had a feel for it. Makes a nice play on that pop-up from Crisp after a long at bat. This being our last home game, I do want to say uh, behalf of you, Mark. Thanks to our uh, great crew here at the Big A. Tremendous. Everyone. Audio. Cameras. The truck. You just saved me like five minutes from having to read all these names. Just say, hey, audio, graphics, thanks. They make us look and sound great. This one's popped up and Roman into foul territory. Two out, Jay Cutlow and Jeff Kibler, our producers. Doug Freeman, our director. Technical director, Kent Kirschbaum, who's filled in, directing a couple of games. And if you had any issues during those games, blame Kenneth. Yeah, we always do. Yeah. Evan Schloff, our AD, graphics, Dan Snyder, Mitch Rand, Reinhardt, stage managers, Dean Benson, Brittany Savicall. Audio mixers, Anthony Hurd and his crew. Matt Yerke, David Walcott, Rich Ryan Mitchell. You want to read something? Our tape. There you go. <laughs> Travis LaFile, Edgar Lopez. Edgar travels with us. Jerry Todd. Best. Bob Sipowich. Sippy. Sippy. He's going to be working with the Ducks. Yeah. We call him Chatty because he looks like Tyler yeah, Chad. But there's no question. Lowry swings and misses there. Go with two. On cameras, the guys that bring you those pictures on Fox Sports West. Fantastic job. Dennis Shannon, Michael Krasnick, who looks like Billy Joel. Kurt he Strubin, is Billy Joel. He is Billy Joel. David Buescher, Fernando Thomas, Chris Bancroft, Tim Dominic, John Lee, Darren Patterson, Scott Sublet. Thank you for your fantastic work. Our engineers, Chris Ruiz, Andrew Lee, Rob Brees, Statsman Norm Peters. Norm! He was around when the Civil War was going on, and we love him. John Lee, by the way, best mustache ever. There's no doubt. Our PA is Chris Benner and uh, Miles LaFosse. Can't forget uh, Don Walker in our Fox box. Lowry fouls this one back. One and two on behalf of uh, the two of us up here in the booth that you guys have to sit and listen to. We're for, very, very lucky to have for three and a half of hours a night every this night. year. Yes. We thank you uh, for everything that you do. You guys are the yeah, best. We're real lucky to have such great people to work with. No question. Two balls, two strikes here on Jet Lowry with two outs in the eighth, 3 1. Angels on top. Jared Weaver looking for the victory today. Dane trying to keep it at 3 1 lead. The Angels in the bottom of the eighth inning will have Calhoun, Hamilton, and Trumbo coming up. Still a 2-2 count. My game is throwing some pretty good pitches in this inning. Keep some tough foul balls against his quality pitches. 17 pitches now thrown. Another 2-2. Lowry yanks this one into right field. That will hang up for Cole Calhoun. A 1-2-3 inning for Dane. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth. Halos maintaining a 3-1 lead.
just two days, but you can continue watching Fox Sports Live every night over on Fox Sports 1. To find Fox Sports 1 on your TV, just go to foxsports1.com. Bottom of the eighth inning, Cole Calhoun to lead things off with the Angels leading at 3-1. to one. Brett Anderson still in the game. Cole fights one foul. It's an 0-1 count. Calhoun 0 for 2. Double play ball in the first. Ground out in the fourth and a walk in the fifth. Boy, Cole's done a nice job against left-handing pitching. Overall, he's hit the ball well to left center field. Anderson staying away. I remember a couple years talking to Kurt Young about Brett Anderson. He said at that point he thought he had the best stuff on the staff, but he hasn't been able to stay healthy enough to be a member of the rotation consistently. 95 from the left side. That's pretty firm. He's got a good breaking ball also. Solid changeup. Again, health always an issue for Brett. Cole chops one toward third. Kayaspa comes in, fields it on two hops, throws out Calhoun, one down. Ernesto Frieri getting loose. The Angels bullpen. In the ninth inning, it'll be Moss, Cespedes, and Reddick for Oakland to face Ernesto. Hamilton fouls it off. Hamilton today, one for three with a couple of runs batted in. Josh, foul tip that one. Boat could not hang on to it, so the at bat continues. Hamilton with a couple RBIs today, one on a fielder's choice, another on an infield hit. 76 RBI this year for Hamilton. This one back up the middle. It's a base hit. Two hit game for him. And for, as we're just going to say, as you were talking about the RBIs for as bad a season as it's been, first season for Josh here, especially here in this ballpark. 21 home runs. 76 now runs batted in. 31 doubles and five triples. Yep. Bob uh, Melvin's coming out. It was Mark Trumbo due up. It looks like. Melvin's going to go to the bullpen and make a pitching change. And that's what we have now with a man at first. One out here in the eighth. The Angels leading it 3-1. to one.
finish off this eighth inning with one out of man on. Kirk, the former USC product, is pitching it down to 69th game, has a six, six and four record, a 2.64 ERA. 65 punch outs in 64 and two third innings, and he'll be facing Mark Trumbo coming up. Mark, uh, 0 for 3. Power fastball, 93 97. Very hard, sharp, breaking slider. Occasional changeup also. Trumbo swinging a miss on a breaking ball. It's a no one count. Hamilton with three stolen bases this year. Cook susceptible to the stolen base. That's the one thing that Oakland always has to be aware of with Cook on the mound because of the movement he has on his pitches and that arm motion makes him susceptible to a stolen base. Now 15 stolen bases in 16 attempts. Especially in the postseason, that one run may be a difference maker. So if you get on first base, the opponent will certainly be trying to steal the base if they can. Three bags for Hamilton. Have not been caught this year. back that was a pretty good hack on an 0-2 pitch for Trumbo <laughs> and Trumbo goes down swinging on a fastball two down If they're fouling off that slide of the pitch before Cook goes fastball, four seam fastball. Just swing and miss at 93. Real good view on that camera angle of the rotation of a four seam fastball. Grant Green, pops one foul behind the plate, and headed toward the seats. Boat did not see that baseball at all. Barton had to go a long way. Just out of play. Off green, a swing and a miss, a throw down a second out of time. So Josh picks up a stolen base. Good decision for Hamilton to go get in the scoring position. Now a little flare in the outfield could result in a run. Good jump and first slide easily beats the throw to second. Well, we've only seen him a couple of times, but uh, guys have been around a whole lot. Stephen Vogt, as far as catch and throw. Got a good arm. Quick release, too, as Green launches one out to center field. Coco Chris can't find it. Now he does, makes the catch. And then JB shucks it. <laughs> we'll head to the ninth <laughs> inning. The Angels leading it 3 to 1.
the ninth to Ernesto Frieri looking for his 37th save of the season. ERA for Ernesto, 3.65, 66 and two-thirds innings pitched, 94 punch-outs. Very good of late. Last 17 games, 10 for 10 as far as save opportunities. 2-0 mark, ERA below one for Ernesto. They'll be facing four, five, and six for Oakland here in the ninth inning. Moss, Cespedes, and Rennick. Dane De La Rosa pitched a scoreless eighth inning. Jared Weaver got the start today, and he went seven. Five hits, two strikeouts, one walk, and one run allowed by Weaver. Ernesto can lock it down here. Weaver will pick up his 11th win in his last start of the season. 24th and final start. Moss getting to start today in left field. Went 0 for 2. Walked in the second, a fly ball to center in the fourth, and a fly ball to left in the sixth inning. This one's out toward right center field. Colin Calgill racing in as is Cole Calhoun. It's Calgill with the call to the catch. One down. It's 18 fly ball outs for Angel pitchers today against Oakland. A lot of miss hits, too. A couple of broken bats. And with the, uh, you know, day games, you have to be weary of those fly balls. For the most part, they've stayed normal depth. That's what his fouls it off. Lowry had one early on to deep right. And then Chuck had one on the one that uh, Lowry hit out to left field, which uh, JB went down on. Aside from that, you know, nothing. They did a very good job of tracking down the baseball. Through the first eight and a third. Yes. Cespedes had himself an infield base in the sixth inning. One for three game. One and two. Well, that's a good fastball at 95. Job of keeping his front shoulder in, maintaining his deception. Upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Josh Reddick waiting on deck. Two two. Swing and a miss. Down goes Cespedes to down. Another punch out. 95th on the season for Ernesto. Well, it does a great job of keeping that front shoulder in. If you're a hitter, you don't see that baseball to the last second. And when it's 95, very difficult to catch up to that fastball. As you can see Cespedes unable to do so late on a swing. Josh Reddick moves one down the left field line. Not hit very deep. Here comes J.B. Shuck. Not going to get there. It falls in for a hit. And Reddick will stop at first base with a two-out single. When you have to play no doubles defense playing deep JB Shuck and that ball just flared in we see a number of the hits today They were all flare variety How far did JB have to come to come to get close to this baseball 
tried to track it down. He can do a single, which is important. That no doubles defense. Good hustle in. Fields it. Gets it back in quickly to keep that force play at second available. Hey, Aspo is swinging a miss. Alberto 0 for 3 today with a strike out of fly to right and a ground ball to first. Swag and a miss. Radic advances on defensive indifference. 0 2 count on Kayaspo. Pierre trying to close it out. Close out a what would be a four and two homestand. Taking the series over the weekend. And they can take the rubber game of this series here this afternoon. Go to. That's down and in. One ball, two strikes. One, two, swing, and a miss. Light that baby up for the last time at home. The Angels pick up the victory, and today the final three to one. Boy, what a job. Well played throughout this entire game by the pitching staff. Just enough offense. Manufactured all three runs to win this one. Three to one against Oakland. Take the series two games to one. Ernesto Frieri picks up his 37th save, 96 punch out, fastball, great deception by. A good fastball hitter in, in Kayaspo picking up the save. Jared Weaver picks up his 11th victory. Seven very good innings. De La Rosa once again setting that bridge between starter and closer. Quality one inning for De La Rosa. Her guy bar three base hits, including an RBI. Run scored. Stolen base. Just enough offense. Josh Hamilton a couple hits. Two RBIs himself. Like he's going to be down talking to Kent French, Josh Hamilton with a big game, two RBI, two singles. What a job to be able to finish off the home stand for the season. In Oakland two to one after beating Seattle two games to one, four and two home stand for the Halos. They win this one, move to 39 and 42 at home. And for Kent French, we're talking to Josh Hamilton who finishes strong here at home. Take it away, Kent. Mark, thank you very much, Josh. You finished this one off uh, in the right way. This was all about situational hitting this afternoon. Um, you had a couple hits. You kept it in the infield, but that's okay. You got the job done. Why has this team been so good at with runners in scoring position and situational hitting? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just relaxing and having fun, understanding the guy behind you can get it done if you don't get it done, so it takes a lot of pressure off of you. When Jared Weaver's on his game, another great outing here this afternoon, seven innings, one earned run. How does that set the tone for the rest of the team? It sets the tone. I mean, you know, you just want to give them two or three runs. Uh, you know, that's all you can ask of being pitcher to hold. Uh, teams are two or three runs, so if you score two or three, you're good to go. Last four games are in Texas. How much would this team like to knock the Rangers out of the postseason? I think uh, if you ask them up and down, uh, they'd love to. Uh, kind of silence the crowd a little bit, as you say. And finally, this is the 11th straight season. Three million fans have come through the doors here at Angel Stadium. What have these guys meant to you, even though you guys really didn't live up to expectations this year? Yeah, no, it's good to see you know fans. Obviously, it's important to have them out supporting us. Uh, we appreciate uh, everyone for coming out. Uh, we had good days, bad days, uh, but you know what? We had fun while we were doing it, and especially the last month we've played. We've had a lot of fun, so we definitely appreciate it. Josh, appreciate the time. All right, thanks, man. All right, Josh Hamilton, our guest. Angels finish up the homestand and the series. 3-1 your final against the A's. Stick around. Angels live right around the corner with Jose Moda and Victor Rojas.